From this high vantage, the valley opened up below me. The stunning contrast of stark white snow against dark rocks and trees. I breathed in deep and savored the crisp, cold mountain air, and I looked out from the ledge. I hadn't noticed how beautiful this landscape was, or how eerily silent. Illuminated by millions of stars, I was able to see the mountain range on the other side, immense dark sentinels carved over thousands of years by the massive glacier at their feet. That is why I climb, to be able to stand on the side of a mountain and become a part of that, to feel free, to rely on my strengths and feel alive in a way that most people don't get to feel. I stared out at the dark and still night and for a few minutes before I fell asleep, forgot about my situation and how absolutely alone I was. The day before, I had spent several hours cautiously winding my way through a snowy field of boulders toward the base of the mountain and finding a flat spot to set up camp. I calculated that I should have enough time to climb to the, the 2,000 feet to the summit, descend and set up before it got too late. I aimed for the Northwest Couloir, the narrow snow-filled cleft to the right of the massive north face of Temple Crag. From there, I could reach the entrance to the Northwest Chute, my route to the summit. I would scale those 2,000 feet of icy fourth-class rock, 20 miles from any other human being, with no cams, no hexes, and no stoppers to keep me from falling, and no partner. I hadn't planned to do this alone, but I was determined to not let that stop me. After a short hike up the snowfield, I passed the entrance of the cleft and began climbing up some rock. The terrain wasn't purely vertical, and I was able to make my way up what resembled my route. After a few hours of climbing, I checked the altimeter and saw that I'd climbed almost a thousand feet. I wasn't moving fast enough and the sun was about to set. Better to reach the summit now and take the easier route down after it gets dark. As the sun faded behind the mountains to the west, climbing was getting harder until sometime after dark when I reached a point where I admitted, I have to be off route. I, I looked around, searching, thinking I would find a well-worn path to mark my route. There was nothing. Should I be north or south of here? It's too dark to really tell. I knew for sure I needed to go down. After scrambling to less steep terrain, I became disturbingly aware. I might not be able to get down. <laughs> I joked with a colleague earlier, hey, uh, call the park rangers if I don't show up for work on Tuesday. <laughs> There was no way I was going to be, dis be able to descend in the dark. I could barely see 10 feet in front of me, and I was sure that I'd slip and fall, and that was guaranteed to be fatal. I resolved that I'd have to spend the night out uh, on the side of the mountain, and I was terrified. Trying to stuff the panic back down and keep myself from breaking, I had no other choice. I had to survive through the night. With nowhere in my immediate vicinity big enough to even sit on, I down-climbed a little and found a flat ledge about the size of a hot tub. I brushed the snow off. It was slightly sloping downward toward the edge, a drop into darkness. The thought of catching my boot on a rock and tripping over the edge flashed into my mind, so I rigged up an anchor with two slings and connected it to my harness. I flaked out the remaining rope into a makeshift bed that would lift part of my body off the cold rock. I took inventory of the small amount of my remaining water and food. Maybe enough to get me through the night? I put on every layer I had packed and checked my phone to see if I had any reception. Nothing. I'd climbed mountains before, faced freezing cold weather, climbed thousands of feet of rock. I made lists, planned my route, double and triple checked my equipment. All of this work to prepare for my trip and I wasn't prepared for this? I had been moving for over 10 hours without stopping, so I pulled out my emergency blanket, wrapped it around me, and laid my body down to rest. When I woke up an hour later, my feet felt like blocks of ice. I forced myself to stand up and had the sensation I was floating, as if my legs stopped below my knees. The ledge was wide enough for me to stand up and move around on, jog in place even. I stuffed my water bottle full of snow from the surrounding rocks and put it under several layers of clothing, not quite on my skin, but close. I checked my watch and forced myself to jog in place for 30 minutes. With each step, the feeling returned to my feet. 
The snow in my bottle had melted from my body heat, so I took a few sips and lay down on my bed, setting my alarm for 30 minutes out. Slightly colder, but not as bad as the first time. I got up again, filled the bottle with more snow, and tucked it back in. This was my routine for the next 12 hours. This would keep me alive. Hour after hour, I was getting tired. Jog, sip, sleep, jog, sip, sleep. Not sure that my routine would keep me going, and I hadn't even reached the coldest hours of the night. I thought I was going to die, but nothing happened. My life did not flash before my eyes. I didn't curl up into a ball and start crying. I just felt sad. Sad that my family was not there with me. Sad for all the things I wanted to do in life that I wouldn't get to do. Sad that my series of seemingly harmless decisions had gotten me to this point. And no one would even know how I died. I pulled out my phone to record a video for my family. Mom, Dad, Rory, Jared, I love you. I've always loved you. I told you that I would be safe when I went out climbing, that I would always come home at the end. But this time, I don't think I'm going to be able to keep that promise. In a couple hours, it's going to be midnight, and that means that it'll be Christmas Day. I cut off the video before the emotion overwhelmed me. I hadn't set out with a plan to climb alone, or even on Christmas Eve. But that's how it worked out. I was tired of being obligated to spend all my vacation time, even during the holidays, with family. What I really wanted was to take that time and go on adventures. I had time off and everyone was busy, so I was on my own. But I still have to get down. And one wrong step could mean the end. I'm scared. 6.03 a.m., 22 degrees Fahrenheit, and I had been doing my routine for 12 hours. The coming dawn meant facing the reality that I was a long way from home and not safe yet. I was tired, cold, and hungry. My throat was parched, and I struggled to contain my fear. I told myself, one thing at a time, one step, and then another. Focus on staying warm. I felt the kind of renewal that comes rarely in life, something like a baptism at the start of a new day, a day that meant that I had lived through the most severe and demanding night of my life. I packed up my gear and started down. I imagined every rock breaking off in my hand, every foothold covered in moss. I knew I had to stay calm and keep my focus on climbing. With slow measured steps, I worked my way down. In just over two hours, I was back down to the snow in the Northwest Couloir where I'd started my climb 24 hours before and hiked back to the rest of my gear. Like a hungry bear ransacking a campsite, I tore at the canister holding my food, inhaling a quick meal. I packed up and headed back to the car near exhaustion. There was no question in my mind. I was not going to spend another night out in the cold. I went home. I called all of my family on the way to tell them how much I loved them. I drove back to San Diego fueled by double caffeinated gas station coffee and a love for life like I had never felt before. In the days and weeks that followed, I walked around with this feeling that I had died out there and was reborn. I feel more alive and sure of who I am and what I want in life. I am a mountaineer. Will I never again climb solo? Is climbing itself too dangerous? Not for me. On those videos I recorded for my family, it's a good thing that I'm still here because they're all completely dark and eerily silent. Jeremy Cox. <laughs>